This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a Minnesota State Arts Board Operating Support Grant, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and a grant from the Wells Fargo Foundation, Minnesota. Welcome to the Schubert Club Music Museum Minis. My name is Tommy Morris, and I'm a harpsichordist and a period instrument specialist. I'm delighted to be able to show you this 350-year-old Italian harpsichord here on display at the Schubert Club Music Museum. The harpsichord has a really beautiful silvery sound produced by a simple mechanism when a plectrum plucks the string. It sounds like this. Versions of the harpsichord have been around since 1460 and were a really integral part of music making in the Baroque period, which was 1600 to 1750, and they are even used in pop culture today. Once you know what to listen for, you'll start to hear the harpsichord everywhere, not just at classical music concerts. It has a really unique and clear sound, and you can hear it used as a special effect in pop music as early as the 1960s. For example, Eminem uses a harpsichord in his song, The Real Slim Shady, um, in a lick that he repeats over and over again, which sounds like this. You will often hear it in a TV show or a movie in the background to depict the monarchy or royalty or high society. Um, it's used like a sound wormhole to bring the viewer into the 18th century. So just start listening for that and you're going to hear that everywhere. For me though, and other period instrumentalists, the harpsichord and music from the Baroque period represents freedom. We are drawn to this instrument and this time period because the music requires so much ornamentation and improvisation. During the Baroque period, it was expected that musicians would take what was written down as just a starting point, a skeleton to be filled in, and this is very fun to do. But before I get into all of that, let's take a closer look at how the harpsichord works. As shown earlier, the harpsichord makes sound through a simple plucking mechanism. When you press a key down, the back goes up, pushing the jack sitting on top of it up, and the plectrum plucks the string. And then there is a spring that allows the plectrum to slide back beneath the string without plucking it again. The jack is made of hardwood, often from a fruit tree such as pear wood. The tongue is made of a softer wood with some give to help hold in the plectrum, which is made from bird quill. The spring behind the tongue is boar's hair. On some modern main instruments, all of these parts are made from plastic but there is a move amongst modern harpsichord makers to go back to these natural materials, which produces a really beautiful sound and a very nice touch. So the way we get from a feather to a quill plectrum is as follows. This is a Canada goose feather. This part is cut off so that what remains is this black hard part on the feather. Then the pith is removed, which is the white stuff on the back, until only the darker black part is remaining. And then it's cut narrower so that it fits into the jack. cut, and we have a plectrum. drum. 
The earliest instruments that we know of with this type of plucking mechanism are mentioned in writing as early as 1460, called the clavicitherium. It is a harpsichord with the soundboard pointing vertically up, facing the player. And when you see this instrument, it's very easy to see how this instrument is merging of harps, which are strung up and down and played this way, and keyboards, uh, like at an organ, which are played this way. At some point around 1500, harpsichords as we know them, with the soundboards flat, which allows gravity to help with the plucking mechanism, were developed in Italy. These instruments were very lightly constructed with short strings at a low tension. The instruments were housed in very thick outer cases that were sometimes very, very highly decorated. So now I'd like to take a look at this beautiful harpsichord. This is a 350-year-old Italian harpsichord dating from approximately 1650 to 1680. This instrument has an inner outer case, so it mimics the look of a harpsichord sitting inside of an outer case, but it's actually connected together, and you can see that here. It has a very, very old keyboard, and you can tell that this keyboard, if it's not original to the instrument, it's a very, very old keyboard because it takes hundreds of years for a keyboard to wear down like this just from playing, the playing patterns of um, people touching the keyboard over time. The jacks are likely original to the instrument as well. There have been some modifications. At some point, new tongues were put into the jacks to accommodate leather plectrum. And then the leather was cut out and um, turned back into tongues that hold quill plectrum. So this is currently voiced in bird quill. These changes are very minimal modifications to help make this instrument playable. It's an important instrument in the world and modifying it further to make it play more easily would take away from the historic importance of the instrument. Harpsichord makers today learn from looking at antique instruments such as this one. So this harpsichord might work better with new jacks and a new keyboard. However, aside from the historic importance of keeping an instrument like this one as original as possible, as a player, there's just so much to be learned from playing a keyboard, worn down from use by people playing it hundreds of years ago. I can feel where people place their fingers when I play this instrument. When I play it, my fingers automatically go into these indentations. It forms the angle of my arm and fingers as I feel where people's fingers played hundreds of years ago. This is really quite a remarkable feeling and experience as a player. It's the closest I will ever be able to come to being coached by a player from the Baroque era. I am now going to play a piece written by Frescobaldi. He was born in Italy in 1583. Frescobaldi was the most celebrated keyboard musician, teacher, and composer in Italy in his day. He served with nobility and in the church in Rome from 1608 until his death in 1643. Frescobaldi had a huge influence over musicians during his time. He wrote a preface to this publication of Toccatas, and I would like to tell you about it because when people think of Baroque music, they think of it as kind of stodgy and strict, and his instructions are the exact opposite. He says to play freely, to add notes, to ornament and arpeggiate, just in whatever way that the player feels to express different moods. Thank you.
Thank you for joining me in exploring the harpsichord. Please come and visit the Schubert Club Music Museum where you can see and hear this beautiful and very old harpsichord for yourself.